Hey, 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 everyone. Blockchain Bernie here with episode 390. And this is an episode about something super interesting, Dutch auctions. What are they? What are they used for? When do we see them pop up, especially in blockchain and crypto? By the end of this video, you'll know about all that and more. So grab a coffee and let's get started. First up, a quick history lesson. Dutch auctions got their name from the Netherlands way back in the 17th century during tulip mania. Picture this, tulip bulbs were the hottest thing around. People were obsessed. Sellers and Dutch auctions, um, sellers used Dutch auctions to move them fast. They'd start with a high price and then drop it until someone said, yes, I'll take it. It was perfect for selling stuff that couldn't sit around like flowers. So I was thinking actually having grown up in Germany, close to the city of Dusseldorf, close to the border, it was like 30 minutes or so to the border. And I know since I'm from the region that the Dutch, I mean, there's some Dutch watching here. I know some of them are part of this, um, but they have a reputation of being stingy. So I thought like, what's that now with the Dutch auction? Is anyone bidding at all? <laughs> okay, but now we know. Um, I dig deeper into it and it was part of that tulip craze uh, back in the day. So um, tulip mania wasn't just a flower craze. It was one of the first economic bubbles ever recorded. Prices for tulip bulbs shot up to insane levels and Dutch auctions helped sellers cash in quickly. Today, this method still lives on. Think flower markets in Holland or even government treasury bill sales. It's all about speed and efficiency. So what is a Dutch auction then? Here's the breakdown. Imagine I'm selling a rare NFT. I start high, say 100 ETH. No takers, I drop it to 90 ETH, then 80 ETH and keep going. The price falls from a ceiling price until someone jumps in and says, mine, that's it. The first bidder to accept the current price wins. It's the opposite of an English auction where bids start low and then climb up. And you've known that starting low and climb up from the Zandium history, right? With the node sales that uh, that Zandium had back in the day, it was basically an English auction because prices were rising. So now, why use a Dutch auction? Uh, let's talk pros and cons. Pro number one, it's fast. The price drops un until someone bites, so no long bidding wars. Pro 2, it dodges the winner's curse. In English auctions, you might overpay in the heat of the moment. With a Dutch auction, you just pick your price. Less panic, more control. But there's a flip side. There's a con. Con number one, sellers might not get top dollar if someone grabs it early. And um, con number two, buyers could wait too long for a steal and miss out, right? So that's the whole thing for the buyer. If there's only limited supply and Zandium plans to use a Dutch auction for the roughly 50 um, <clears throat> P-notes that are being sold in addition to the 300 that have already been sold, there is a limited supply, right? And... With Zandium, the Dutch auction for the for the remaining P nodes, it will all be about anyone can buy as many as they want. And we're starting at a relatively high price and it's going to be dropping each and every hour. Right. So one hour and then, you know, it, the price drops. And the risk is always there could be someone that just waits for the price to be there and then they grab them all. And if if someone else wasn't fast enough, they miss out. So yeah, so when do we see that in blockchain and in crypto? All the time. Take token sales for one. Projects use Dutch auctions to spread tokens out evenly. No whale domination. Another spot, decentralized finance or DeFi. In lending protocols, if someone's loan goes underwater, their collateral gets liquidated via a Dutch auction. Price starts high, drops fast, and someone scoops it up to settle the debt. It's quick and market-driven. So that was something I learned when I did the research for this video here. Um, that's fascinating to see that these uh, liquidations and lending protocols 
are basically uh, Dutch auctions. And then um, let's uh, loop into uh, to another real example, the Gnosis ICO in 2017. Gnosis or Gnosis, not sure how to pronounce it, <clears throat> is a platform for prediction markets. And they ran a Dutch auction for their GNO tokens. Here's how it went. They set a high starting price and capped how much Ether they'd raise. The price dropped over time and buyers bid whenever they liked. Once the Ether cap was hit, the auction stopped. Everyone paid the final price, super transparent. It raised what they needed and spread the tokens wide. Genius, right? All right, so then other projects love this too. So uh, Polkadot's DOT sale, dot sale in 2017, used a twist of the Dutch auction. Price dropped until all tokens were gone. Decentralized exchanges also play with, um, with, with it for price discovery. And in DeFi, those collateral auctions, Dutch style all the way. Why? Because blockchain makes it even better with smart contracts. These little programs run the auction, they set the price, drop it, handle the bids, all automatic, no middleman. It's trustless and open for everyone to check. All right, so um, let's tie this all together. Dutch auctions start high, drop low, and, um, you know, whenever someone buys, they buy. And with the P-Node sale in Zandium, we're going to request or require both for P nodes, right? So you will have to make um, a payment in Zand tokens as we had before with the initial P node sale, but there will also be a USDC payment, right? So we do that for two things. Um, we give the utility to the Zand token. So you need Zand tokens to buy the remaining P nodes, um, which is great for the price of the Zand token. And it creates demand for the Zen token and gives you utility for your Zen token. So if you already have a lot of Zen tokens, you can use them for that. Um, but the other thing is we also require USDC this time because this remaining Pino token sale is for Zandium an important um, fundraising uh, mechanism, right? So we need to raise more funds to further um, fund the development, even though the Munich release is out there and, you know, you'll see it, stay tuned, you'll see it any day now that the Munich release, the fully functional prototype of the storage layer with everything uh, will be out there. We're just doing the last things of a quick demo, like a file explorer type of thing, um, which will be, a, you know, a file system on chain. Um, but you will have to pay both um, a part in USDC and the other part in Zand. So it will be this amount of USDC, this amount of Zand, and then it goes for one hour. And if they don't go away for that price, after one hour it drops, right? So the, the, the current thinking is like Zandium is likely going to do it like for um, 12 hours, right? it's going to drop 10% every hour, each and every hour. So it starts at some point, and then we have a drop of 10% for 12 hours, and then we have another 36 hours where it drops something around 5% every hour, each and every hour, right? So that'll, you know, it'll drop significantly um, to, you know, by more than a factor of 10, maybe a factor of 12, over these 48 hours, but after 48 hours, it stays at that so-called reserve price, the minimum price. We leave it open for another 48 hours and whichever doesn't sell uh, during that period is not getting sold. So that's the Dutch auction. Um, we're working on that. We're super excited. Um, it is great when things need to sell fast. We don't want to do like a week or months long sale here at this point in time we want to have it done in a certain amount of time and um, also of course we want to raise the maximum amount of money for the zandium foundation to further fund the uh, uh, fund the development so and uh, you will see that soon i hope this was a little bit of food for thought for you guys to look into dutch auctions i gave you a lot of examples on where it's being used even in 
crypto and DeFi, it was interesting to see that it, you know, was used for Polkadot. It was used for um, uh, some of the other uh, ICOs here. And um, it's being used in liquidations. That's super interesting to me. I didn't know that. So, you know, whenever you do stuff in, in, in DeFi and in crypto, uh, most of the time it's leveraged, right? You either use perps or you use um, um, lending protocols or stuff like that. And then, you know, if the price goes out of range, the price moves against you and, you, and your leverage is exhausted, you know, you might get a margin call and you might be able to, to add more uh, funds to, to prevent it from getting liquidated. But most of the time, crypto is fast. You just get liquidated. And that means, you know, someone needs to pay you out for whatever is left in your account. Um, but those exchanges, they don't do it themselves. They don't do it on their own dime. So what they usually do is um, auction it off in Dutch auctions. I didn't know that, but that's a great way to do it, right? Because, you know, it needs to go and they start with a high price. And if it doesn't go away, they lower it and lower it. They don't want you to lose out, right? So they start at a high price so that you get a fair price for whatever you have left in your account when that unfortunate situation happens that you get liquidated. And, um, you know, I, I, I have never recommended any of these things here, neither perps, uh, um, which are, which is another term for perpetual futures, which is a leveraged product, right? You can sometimes leverage it as a factor of 50 or 100. So if you leverage one for, for, for at 100, it means the price just needs to move 1% in the wrong direction and you're getting liquidated. I would never recommend these products unless you're like a high frequency trader, you have lots of experience, you know you have the fastest connection so you can be faster than anyone else. And you think like you're you're a quant genius and you have the best form, then do it, right? But you know, that is for the pros. I would never do that, not even a 10 for one, five for one leverage, um, because it, it's just not worth it, right? The 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 potential gains there just don't outweigh the risks. Uh, that's what I feel. And it was interesting to learn they use Dutch auctions to um to give you at least, you know the best thing that anyone's willing to to give you for whatever is left in your account when when you get that margin call all right dutch auctions interesting stuff um please i almost forgot the whole video here um like and uh, subscribe leave a comment our points program and excuse me the zandium uh, foundation's points program is still up and running there were a little bit of issues with no tasks being added that is all fixed so the uh, the points app is up and running so collect your points on points.zandium.network for all these uh, things that that you're doing here and um thanks so much for watching guys catch you later peace